Welcome to the Modernize or Die podcast, CFML News Edition, where we keep you up to date with everything going on in the Cold Fusion community. We'll share the latest news on events, releases to engines, frameworks, libraries, and tools, as well as spotlighting quality content from the community. Hello, and welcome to the July 9th edition of the CFML News podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Davis, uh, Senior Developer for N-League, and with me today I have... Brad Wood, the other host, uh, Lead Architect for Order Solutions. All right. Good to be back. Yeah, glad you're back. We took a little break last week, um, had some things going on. It was also uh, here in the States, a uh, pretty big week, so we uh, decided to just party it on. And um, <laughs> Gavin is still away working on his accent and uh, making some good uh, memories there with the kids. Um, hopefully he'll be back with us next week. He may be back. I know Brad and I were just talking. Um, Brad, you may or uh, Gavin, you may not be back. We may just kick you off. Yeah, I don't know. You'll have to fight your way back in. We're, getting, we're kind of settled into a groove now. We kind of got used to this. So I don't know that we want to give it up. Right, yeah, we may stick him in the in, like, in between us. We can p- pop his little head in there between us or something, and maybe he'll join. So we can get like a little TV on the in the back of the studio, and Gavin's face can be in that. Yeah, we can throw him up top here. That'd be awesome. Yeah, we'll 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 bring him in. He's still he's still part of the team, uh, but he's um, working on his vacation, enjoying it. So anyway, let's get to uh, what we're here for. We are here to tell you about the CFML news that's been going on for the past two weeks. And um, believe it or not, you're going to be surprised with how much information has not changed. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, the, the only thing that I know of that has changed as far as the uh, conferences go is that CF Camp is now done with their call speakers. Uh, it, it ended yeah. last night. 110 submissions. Boom. And I think, what do we say, 100 and like five of them are no one irks. So you have five or me. Yeah. That's so. It. Yeah, that's pretty much, um, you know, what we have there. We have, uh, yeah, here's a little blog post from it. What do we have? And it's closed. 110 submissions. That's awesome. Thanks to everyone who submitted. Great effort. Dot do do do. Hope to see you guys there. So, um, yeah. other than that, we do have the uh, Adobe CF Summit Early Bird uh, still going on. Okay. Um, as far as we know, it's still going on. And um, they have several different um, options uh, one being their certificate program and conference pass. It's like $4.98. Uh, if you want to do the CF security pre-conference and conference pass, it's got a price. The conference pass is only uh, $99. Bucks. Do it. Go do it, do it, do see it. you there. Um, you can't You can't get a cheaper Cold Fusion conference unless, well, I don't know. Actually, our, our, our end of the box really buried us a little bit about that same price. I don't know. I got one free. Oh, you did? Yeah, the Fusion Reactor guys hooked me up um, oh. last year or the year before. I can't remember. Wow. Uh, so thank you, David. Special. Yeah, special ed. But um, yeah, sure. I do, I do, um, do appreciate that. Yeah, um, you won't get to a you won't get to a conference in Vegas for that for that price. We'll, we'll put it that way. No, typically <laughs> not. So, um, Brad, tell them what we also have going on um, at that same conference. I know there's a Adobe's doing a lot, but Ordis is doing a lot as well. Uh, Ordis wanna... is always there. We're going to be at the booth, and we're going to be handing out, you know, thousand dollar bills. Um, no, just kidding about that. We, oh. we, Man. we we will be there hanging out uh, with the with the crowd and uh, doing our thing. But afterwards, after CF Summit, uh, we have a two different two day workshops going on. We've got the um, well, what do we have? Uh, Zero to Hero, and. Um, Superhero, uh, superhero, yeah, like, like Spider Man or Superman or something. I don't know. We'll have to work on that. Uh, Mr. Boom see how it goes. I really wish yeah, Mr. Mr. Boom. Boom. We, do you remember Mr. Boom? Right, we talked oh, about I this remember, last time. I remember Mr. Boom. I brought him back from the last into the box. However, um, it did get a little bit of uh, damage. Um, yeah, enjoyed. Mr. Boom is a cardboard cutout that you stand behind, and you're suddenly awesome as muscular pictures. as Gavin is every day of the week. So it's. <laughs> It's pretty special for Sorry. skinny guys. Sorry about the faces. Uh, it was special for me. Just I'm not skinny, but I don't have muscles. So it was, it was, I was happy. It was special. Um, yeah. Well, we've timed our orders workshops so they don't overlap with the uh, Adobe ones. Um, so you should be able to hit. Uh, do them all. Do them all. Yeah, do them all. Come early, leave late. 
you can get so trained up that your your brain will want to check out and, and go home by the time you're done. So yeah, good times. But but you'll be in Vegas. Do you really want to check out? <laughs> just top golf. You could just live there, couldn't you? Boom! Top golf is fun, man. And that's one thing too. Um, I had to get a top golf tournament going for after. But y'all got see after the some after the conference, y'all have to get ready for the um, workshop. So that's kind of a bummer. Anyway, aside from that, um, so Gavin and Eric are doing zero to hero, right? So cold box zero to hero is like intro level. So if you're thinking we get a legacy code base, we want to make it modernized. We want to work our way over to cold box. Uh, this is for you, right? Zero to hero is all based on actually building a real app from scratch. So as you learn the concepts, you actually build something. So you walk away from that with a working application. And then here is a superhero. Yep. Can, what? Can, can we what? sell that app? Can we sell that? Uh, it's kind of like a Twitter clone. Uh, there we go. Let's all just launch our own Twitter then. From <laughs> Dude, seriously, this would be and like... Then, then I can kick people off like you if I want to. Yeah, I wouldn't have. I never, I'd be the first one to go, I promise you. But that would be, you know how awesome that would be? Let's, let's build our own uh, Twitter clone. I, I'm pretty certain it's probably been, been tried quite a few times. Well, you're right, but still... All right, so Cold Box from here to Superhero is if you already are familiar with Cold Box and you want to learn some of those advanced techniques. And that's going to be Luis and myself uh, doing that one. And that is the API edition. So we're going to focus on building API specifically. We're talking about modules. We're talking about um, just a lot of the more advanced features of Cold Box. So you can take your pick if you want to uh, wade into the deep end or if you want to jump into the, I'm sorry, wade in the shallow end. Or uh, maybe just jump from the frying pan to the fire. <laughs> we have a uh, we have both ends of the spectrum covered for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited about that, and um, I've always I've attended several uh, workshops. I think I've told you guys in the past, and um, it's always you know if you don't know anything, you still come because you still need to learn, right? But if you feel like you you know something and you kind of have an idea, you, it leaves you like yearning for more, you know. And so that's what the 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 other conference there or the other workshop is going to be about is a little bit more advanced, a little more detailed. Um, I'm excited. Um, hopefully, I can get to attend that. Um, that'd be pretty cool. Just to see, you know, hey, see what's up. Just see, maybe we can learn something. Maybe I can learn. Dude, we can always learn something. And that's another thing too. So speaking of learning something, I'm going to jump topics here, and this might be uh, interesting to some whoa, of you guys. Easy. Whoa. Jumping topics. It's well, the, no, the topic is still on conferences. But it's not about the CF conference. I want to talk about this underground JS conference that's coming up in Nashville. Oh, oh. have you been cheating on Cold Fusion? What? You do, you I'm a cheetah. I've been cheetah. Well, and oh, I tell you what, God. I found this the other day, and the reason I found it was um, working on doing a lot of testing. And obviously, you know, you've heard Brad and everybody just hound test boss, test boss, test boss. Got to test. <laughs> and there's very, very, very good reason for that. But thinking deeper than that, right, for front end developers and things like that, well, you don't really need cold box to, or test box for that. Um, but you had mentioned the use of Cypress. And mm -hmm. um, Cypress is something I had no clue what it uh, was about. And so that's why I found this. I plan on attending uh, this conference. Uh, if everything goes well. And, they have um, a session on Cypress and testing. So I feel like, you know, it'll be good to test the core logic, but it's also good to test the actual functionality. Do you, do you so agree? So Cypress is a testing framework for JavaScript. Is that what I'm catching here? You know, I don't know if it's necessarily for JavaScript or what, but it, um, it honestly, here's what it does. You build a script, right? And I played with it a little bit yesterday. You build a script and I want to say that, you know, it runs this app, the Cypress app based off that script, which actually has its own, um, like Google Chrome, I guess, built in. Okay. That, so it's actually rendering the page then. Yeah, it renders the page and it's like you do a Cypress dot, like, I don't know, you, you find the, you know, kind of like the document dot get element ID that we all used to do to find the yeah, form. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, hey, well, fill it with this username and then fill the password with this password and then. Click the submit okay, so button. So it's kind of like Selenium, sort of, and it's just <clears> like a rep scripting out a front end user interacting with your site. Then, yeah, maybe so. Um, and I haven't used Selenium, so um, that's probably um, you know exactly what it is. But so anyway, that conference is going to be August the second. Um, if you feel like attending, hit me up. I'm going to be there. Um, Where's that? It is in Nashville. Nashville. Yeah, that's like. Um, 
what do they call that? Nash Vegas. I've heard some people call it that. Nash like Vegas? a little Vegas and all. I mean, you know. They have a lot of uh was it music row and country stuff anyway. They we don't do want to have a lot of music. They're sort of known for that. You know, I heard about that once. <laughs> yeah, I really did. So uh so I'm I'm expecting big things from you. I am thinking like a Cypress uh module for test box. Woohoo! You know, coming I, out of this. You never can tell. Actually, you know what? That's really good because that would make hooking into the um, um, the CI and all would be really nice to do it through there. So we'll That's see. Really cool. So stay well, tuned. Luis, we'll, there's no telling what we're going to find Luis has promised us modules and test box. So I know Eric said he has like 10 modules or 15 he's going to write like the first day. That's the rumor I'm starting. So you better get yours in quick. You better jump. Well, don't steal my Cypress, man. Oh, darn it. We shouldn't have talked about it in the podcast. All right. right. Hey, actually, still it. Jump on it because you probably know more about it than I do. So, (laughs) so, hey, I'll be happy. Um, All right. So, we talked about the boot camps um, in Vegas. Those same boot camps are going to be in Bangalore, India. Bangalore. So, if you're thinking that's too far away from me, we might come to your front door if you live in Bangalore, India. Yeah. Is it Bangalore or Bangalore? I don't know. It's in India. It's, it's, so it's far away and I wish I was going. That's all I know. I hear you. Yeah, so uh if you're in India, your team, I know there's several uh big shops in India, uh CF shops. Um definitely check this out. Um I think it'll be good for you guys. Um and that's Luis doing that one. So you get the the man, the myth, the legend or something. Uh Get it right from the horse's the, mouth. The man, the myth. So you get a um, a Spanish accent um, <laughs> speaking to people in India, trying to understand his English. Nice, <laughs> I love it. You see where I'm going with this? Like I'm going out a, a deep, deep hole, deep, deep hole. So um, anyway, it's going to be good. Um, I hope you guys can attend. Um, now we did talk about CF Camp uh, earlier. Um, the biggest news with them is that um, submissions All the speakers is closed. Done deal. And I mean, they were Kai. Man, he's like cracking a whip over there. Yeah, I right think I think he actually UTC. did the cutoff right on Ooh. like a UDT time or something. Like it U- was UTC. It was UTC. midnight UTC. That's what it was. Yeah, July seven. Yeah, and I I literally waited to the last hour. I just procrastinated and procrastinated. And then finally, I, I looked at the clock. I guess it was Sunday, and I was like, "Oh man, I literally have like 50 minutes before this closes. I should probably put Submit in my it. topics." Yeah, so. you, you probably should. You probably should. I did. I did. Good deal. I, I I tossed in a few. Not as many as no one, mind you, but I got yeah. in a few. And the dates for that is uh, going to be the 17th and 18th of October. And um, yep. so, hope you all can attend. Now, do you know? Let's see. Is Ortis going to have any training at CF Camp? Ortis is going to have training at CF Camp. Woo-hoo. It'll be amazing. You should show up and find out what it is. Still don't know yet, right? It's a mystery. <laughs> uh, I think we decided internally, and I forget what it was. We need to get the blogs out on that. Um, but that'll be Eric and myself will be uh, heading those up. So Cool. Do you care to announce it live on the famous... See if no, I'll probably, show, I'll probably say it wrong. I need to go look and remember what it was we decided. <laughs> you don't, hey, at least you know you're going to be there, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Okay. I'll talk about something. Yeah, I'm sure we, I'm sure you can manage <laughs> so, that. So I'll stick me in a room and I'll talk for eight hours with whatever needs to happen. Hey, whatever works. Just don't choke. All right, so <laughs> so that that really pretty much wraps up the actual news portion as far as the events and things that are happening in the uh, CFML uh, community. Um, so what I want to talk about next yeah, for some actual new content, some new content, right? Yeah. I mean, we want you to be there. That's why we keep throwing it at you. We want you to be there. We want you to be there. Um, it's, it's very good. You know, um, attending a cold fusion conference is, is really an amazing thing. And there was a lot of people that don't get a chance to go to them. Um, I never even would have considered like paying for my own way to go to a conference before, you know, when I, when I didn't used to go to them, you know, I was like off oh, my employer is not paying for it. Screw it. Right. But right. honestly, like, I think I would, I would, I mean, I wouldn't go to every conference that exists if I had to, you know, pay completely out of my pocket, but don't underestimate the, uh, just the sense of community and getting to, you know, meet people and get a bunch of ideas. Uh, there's always something special about being in person. So if you haven't been to a cold fusion conference, that's why we always harp on these because there is just so much, uh, so much fun that happens there and you don't realize you've been missing it until you go to a few and you're like, Oh man, how did I, 
how did I live before this? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, I've been programming since, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe 99. And um, my first... It was the summer of 99. No, wait, no. No, that's no, not 69. right. Yeah, 69. I was not around in 69. Um, but so my first uh, CF Summit conference was only about four, maybe five years ago at max, um, if that. Adobe and Max? No, no, like max time it's only been four or five years tops oh, since i've like the max function parentheses yeah at the end yeah no it. not that function so i kick myself for never for all the years that i missed out honestly because well, see my first conference literally was adobe max back when they still actually back had in the fusion content back in the day yeah way met, back. Met, first two people i met was sean corfield and ray camden that's cool and after that mike brunt dan wilson the whole everybody was there the whole crew yeah, and so, then they stopped having Cold Fusion content. Everybody, everybody quit going to Adobe Max, and then we got CF Summit. So I don't even know what blogs, tweets, and videos, Andrew. Yeah, but what I was uh, before we get uh, off okay. of that, um, okay. I'm gonna say uh, even if you think you know everything about Cold Fusion, uh, just putting a little plug out there. Um, there's a lot of people that are looking for jobs, right? Um, I'm not saying Great. I went to CF Summit to look for a job, but. I am currently employed by Sam Knowlton, who I met mm -hmm. at CF Summit. Um, just saying. A lot of great networking, man. So networking, man, yeah, it's key. And you can always learn something and uh, maybe help out a uh, community member as well while you're there. So, um, dude, just, you know, if you can make it as 100 bucks, uh, if I have to, man, hit me up. We'll get a double bed or something, you know. Oh, yeah. I've, sh I've shared. I usually get a room with two beds, and I've shared it. A lot of times with someone who needed a room. Yeah. Because, you know, if I'm speaking, you get a room as part of that, you know, and it's like this giant room with two beds. I just feel like I feel like I'm wasting it. So, absolutely. Yeah, I I've, think I've piled in with Gavin uh, a couple of times. Um, not uh, in the room, but yeah, <laughs> we shared rooms. So, definitely, man, if you want to go hook somebody up, you know, text, Slack, whatever, make it happen. There's an events place. channel on the CFML Slack that uh, is a good place to chat about events, especially if you're uh, needing help finding a place to stay and stuff. So, yeah, cool. All right, so where you were going with that before I got sidetracked? Um, the you. blogs, tweets, videos. We don't have any videos yet. You had you haven't released a video. We do have I some blogs to... and tweets for you. You want to know what I actually? I was holding off <clears throat> recording any more screencasts until I got my new Yeti microphone, which I'm using right now. Because I got so sick and tired of how nasally I sounded when I, I used my Logitech headset. So I'm podcasting on my nice new Yeti microphone right now. And so I'm finally, I need to make some more screencasts. And yep. Time to jump have, on it. You've got the audio. Nice deep announcer voice finally. My, my deep voice. <laughs> exactly. Very stoic voice. All right. Stoic. Stoic. So. Bam! What's Here's a twit one? for you from Rick Mason. Everybody knows Rick. Uh, who, who you calling a twit? Uh, you man, because this is talking <laughs> okay. about you, twit. No, this is a twit. This the whole That's thing's the a twit. Look, the twits. Yeah, the whole thing's a twit. Not Rick. Rick's not a twit. Rick's a tweeter. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, uh, he gave a shout out to Brad here. This is a shameless plug. Brad didn't know I was doing this. Um, I threw this on here. This I just worked him. here. He just worked here, and. Um, Basically, it's just a shout out. Thanks uh, for everything on Reinforced. It's um, you know you're hosting, so that's cool. That's yeah. So basically, before Adobe shut down Reinforced, I wrote a command box task runner because why not? That went through and just downloaded every single download on the entire site, and I threw it in Google Drive. So yeah, um, if there's anything you used to go get from Reinforced and you can't find it, and it's not on Forgebox, um, that's a yeah, public that's... Google Drive folder. So give it give it a shot there. Anything that was a four hundred four, I didn't grab because well, I couldn't. But All right. And if you see there. something in there, a benefit, and it's not on Forgebox, man, add it. Add it. Yeah, seriously, add it. Most Dude. most of the useful, most of the maintained libraries on Reforge were actually added to Forgebox. Um, but yeah, if there's something that you're using, yeah. There was a tag that I had grabbed off of there, not to get too sidetracked on things, but I'm telling you, it was, it was excellent. Um, basically converted XML to JSON. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that one. Uh, there was a tag version, mm -hmm. and then there was a script version. I want to say um, 
I better not say, because I, I know some of the authors, but they were just um, editors and tweakers on it. Uh, so I don't want to give out the wrong props, but um, yeah, uh, we've all used something off, off that site before. Um, next up we have, we have a blog post from none other than Michael Bourne. So Michael was, uh, he's been producing a lot of content lately. <clears throat> and, he is. And Michael, I apologize. Um, I've, I've been, not to say I've been um, lazy on it, but um, it's just a lot of content for me to digest to, uh, um, you know, to, to hand out and all. So there are some things that uh, may have gotten missed and uh, we'll, we'll definitely catch up on them. But one thing uh, he blogged about was uh, storing uh, and using date time offsets in Lucy and He's got a good little blog about, you know, how you did it and things like that. I'm kind of showing in the background. Brad, I know you can't see it, but if you look up, you can. Oh, I can see it. Look up. You can see it. Look I up. See it. It's right above. Oh, there oh, it you is. got a stack trace right oh, above your head. Yeah. Well, that's not really a stack trace either. That's just a dump. So it kind of shows you what he did and, and his logic and all behind it. And, um, you know, if you're building a big app that needs something um, like that, hey, check it out. Yeah, it might do uh, what you need. Um, Next off, we got a cool little twit here from Ben. So, uh, Brad, I'll let you take this away. This is um, about ben the Nagel. Lucy. This is about the Lucy Five Three. Yeah, well, it's a feature that's actually been around since Rilo, but Ben <laughs> has been uh, blogging a bit more about Cold Fusion, which we really? love to see. Love um, it. And yeah, Ben is is been making the jump from Cold Fusion Ten to some of the new Lucy stuff, playing around with the uh, Lucy features. So that's opened up a. Uh, a new world of fun little features. So he has a tweet um, about how you can dynamically load uh, Java classes by specifying your jar files directly to the create object function, which is a Lucy only feature. You can't do that in Adobe Cold Fusion. Um, with the this.java settings in your application.cfc, you can specify uh, jar files there, and that works in both engines. Um, but if you're in Lucy, you can just completely on the fly say, you know, create an object. I want it to be this Java class, and this is the jar I want to load it from, and uh, it just works, and it's great. So Ben has a cool little demo that kind of shows uh, how that works. Um, uh, if you're already a Lucy user, you might already be familiar with it, but if you're an Adobe person wondering what Lucy has to offer you, this right here is a, a great little uh, hidden gem, if you will. Yeah, for sure. And there's, you know, man, there's a lot of Lucy-only uh, features that... Um, being that I have am, am personally fully uh, converted to Lucy, I, not to say I take for granted, but whenever I have to do something in a like in Adobe, I'm like, holy crap, what, really, seriously? And um, this is just this is probably would probably be one of them if I ever have to go back. Uh, I haven't used this yet, but it looks really cool. It's kind of like a down and dirty. I want to say down and dirty, but it's like a get it done kind of way, you know? Like, hey, let's just do it, right? <laughs> am, I mean, am I kind of right with that? It's like, yeah. hey, just load the jar here and go. Let's get on with it. So, um, Well, I mean, it's really nice if you're creating anything that's modular. You know, code you can mm -hmm. drop in um, and just remove. And it can just be completely self-contained. Self right. It doesn't require you to have to go also edit, you know, another file somewhere. So, right. Edit your whole application just to make one thing work. It could work standalone. Yeah. Good for things like maybe task runners, possibly. Woo! Uh, well, actually... Uh, when it comes to task runners, Command Box has a built-in class loading helper where you can just point it to a jar and it'll class load it the system class loader. But you could, you. you could also use it there. Look at you. One step ahead. Always one step ahead. Always one step ahead. So <laughs> while I got you on this kind of like Command Box, what's the, um, what's the latest on Command Box and Java 12? No change. <laughs> I, uh, that was totally all, all put him on the spot. There, I was just I curious. I wanted to see what I he was going to say. No, yeah, there there hasn't been any uh, any progress that I'm aware of on the on some of the outstanding Lucy issues that are preventing me from being able to upgrade the command box uh, core CLI uh, to the latest version of Lucy, which is five three. Um, maybe maybe we can have that to, ready by CF Summit. That that could at least be something you know an announcement. That'd be pretty huge, don't you think? If, if we can get Lucy on board to get that yeah, yeah, and rolling, those issues. it would be nice. But yeah, I, if you're if you're interested, hit me up on Slack and I'll tell you what tickets you can go create noise 
on and vote on in the, in the Lucy Bug Tracker. Why don't you um, send them here? We'll also add those to the show notes here, so you can go and vote on them for us, and uh, okay. that'll help us get um, you know Command Box running on uh, the latest version of Java. So that'd be really yep. helpful. Um, so we'll get that. That'll be in the show notes. Check that out. Help a brother out. Now we have. <laughs> Um, blog posts from this. I don't know this guy here, Coders Revolution. What's his name? Bradley. Sounds like a jerk. I think he is. Um, <laughs> tell us, tell us about this uh, blog here you wrote, Brad. Uh, yeah, I put a quick uh, example of functional programming, or FP, as those cool kids say, um, in Cold Fusion. And I was, I was actually just writing some code in Command Box, uh, which is. Uh, you know, CFML, and I um, I was using like the the struct each uh, function, and um, I was just looking at it, thinking that's a nice little like real life example of you know using uh, some of the functional programming and functional programming, which I kind of explained in the post, basically just means um, when you're using higher order functions or functions that accept other functions. So when you use uh, methods like struct filter or struct each, you can pass a closure into them. Um, and that's basically what you were, are referring to when you use phrases like functional programming or higher order functions. And so my blog post just shows uh, the old way I would have written the code, uh, just kind of iteratively with a loop, you know, a for in loop. Um, and then the new way that I actually wrote the code using uh, uh, struct filter and struct each and then some closures, um, which is about the same, it was about the same number of lines of code. Uh, but I just like it because the, the functional style, I tell Cold Fusion what I want it to do. I don't tell it how I want to do it. So that's kind of the difference. And then I also threw a little bonus in there. I showed how to do it using the arrow functions, which is currently a Lucy only feature. Uh, Bill Beast dragging their feet, getting that, uh, getting that in there. Uh, but the arrow functions are just a syntax to write enclosures, um, where it just kind of just gets rid of all the boilerplate, uh, that you can just to make it, um, nice and, and compact and tidy so anyway if uh if you're interested in some of those uh some of those new functional things uh you can just skim through that i'm gonna give you a little real life scenario use case that i ran across logged up cool now do you uh do you call those fat arrows or just i've, heard that, I've heard that phrase i don't necessarily use that myself but yeah i've heard that it's right. like the, the equals equals and then thing angle. to make an error just call it a fat arrow yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you should fat shame your your. Oh, no so fat shaming! You're right. Don't fat shame my um, functions <laughs> here. Dang it! <laughs> so uh, the next thing we have here, this is one you posted up, and I'm gonna see if I can get it on the screen here real quick. Like, yep. um, I didn't have this one prepped, so I apologize. Um, I'm hoping it fits. Fingers crossed. Woohoo! Bam! Switch from tag to script. Michael Bourne is at it again. Be born. Ultimate supremacy, Army. supremacy, oh. something. Well, I don't know. I know there's some shows and all about that, but um, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Michael's got a blog post uh, talking about how to switch from, um, you know, using tags as scripts and um, just kind of the, the 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 who's and what's and odds and ends of you know your CF function. There you go. You see it. CF function there looks you. like that, and then we got public void function. You know, so you can kind of see the differences. Man, I use I loved Cold Fusion for C, for tag, so I I feel like that's what made Cold Fusion popular back in its day. But like you and I were talking earlier, man, looking at the difference between tag and script, it's like why would I ever write anything but script? But that's just me personally, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, I kind of hate to write tags. I mean, if I'm template in HTML, yeah, but if I'm just writing, you know, CFCs and business logic and and functions. It, it feels clunky. But I mean, if you've got if you've got a giant code base out there full of tags and you're trying to work on converting some of that over to script, this is a good blog post. It really just covers a bunch of basics. Um, and it covers some cool tools like the CF Script Me, which uh, is actually something Pete Freitag made. It's a service that you paste in tags and it spits out script. And uh, Pete even has a, a CLI command that, that Michael has there. He talks about in the blog to try to help you like convert your stuff on the fly. So... Yeah, here it is. I got it behind us. Uh, it's a uh, box install CF script me dash command. And um, you can just run it box CF script me and then the path to the to the CFC and um, it'll make that change for you. So that's really cool if you're going to make that yeah. change. 
it, no it's, it's not it's not going to hurt you uh, to switch over. I mean, if it, the codes should pretty much work, right? It's it's all cool fusion code. So, yep. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So that brings us to the next portion of our show, which is going to be what module of the week. Woohoo! What do we choose this week? Drum roll. Drum roll. That was loud. And we're going to cram it down your throat one more time, and there's a good reason for that. The module of the week is going to be quick. Uh, okay. Quick is an ORM, which is Object Relational Mapper, written in CFML. And um, some of the biggest reasons why we brought quick uh, to you, I know a lot of guys are, are you know, anti ORM or this or that or the other. But I really wanted to make mention of the latest Quick uh, 2.2 release. Um, there are some items in there that um, are not on, uh, you know, like the the change log, and a lot of it has to do with performance. Um, so the company I work for, In League, um, Samuel Knowlton um, is the owner of it, and he made the decision to jump in um, with Quick. And we've been using it um, for a while now and, and constantly, um, you know, working side by side and even submitting some requests for Eric uh, as far as, um, you know, performance tuning and things like that, trying to uh, keep quick, quick, you know, um, <laughs> the idea of quick being that is, you know, it's quick uh, to write. We wanted to keep it um, quick to operate as well. Um, one of those items is going to be the caching of the metadata. Um, instead of it every time you basically call um, an entity or an instance or what have you, um, it's not having to read to get that meta metadata. It's, it's a pulling it from a cache. And so um, Sam was doing some testing the other day on pulling up some records. Um, and he was telling me that it does perform much better on Lucy than it does uh, Adobe Cold Fusion. Um, basically, he pulled about 100 records uh, with eager loading multiple items. Um, so that's like a record with relationships and everything. Um, something that was taking about four to five seconds um, on Adobe Cold Fusion, he got it down as like one to two seconds, you know, tops on Lucy. So um, Quick is definitely getting quicker and quicker by the minute. So Pretty that's cool. a, that's the reason why Quick is the module of the week, even though you're probably tired of hearing us talk about Quick. It, it's gaining and it's doing real well. And a lot of that has to do with um, Sam and InLeague and uh, Eric and Oris there. Um, yeah, Eric people and, jump, people jumping on it and using it um, really helps iron out little little bugs and things like that and smash down any performance issues to keep it running good. So Yeah, for sure. So, it, and, and the reason for me mentioning that is uh, not for any kind of pat on uh, my back or anything. It's to let you know that if you see something that you feel like you can benefit from and use it, Man, don't hesitate to give it a shot. And if you can fine tune it, submit some uh, tickets, help a brother out. Um, I mean, because Eric, you know, um, he's got a job. He can't just rewrite all these KK modules. Whew, about messed up there. He can't just keep writing all these modules for nothing. You know, he needs a little help. So um, at any rate, that's the reason why Quick is our module of the week. Now, that brings us to the RBS code. We should have like an MVP and be like the, the module valuable player or something. I don't know. We'll have to work on that. Yeah, let's work on that. So the, <laughs> this one here in that. that I want to mention to you is, um, let me see if I can get this up. Uh, we don't know how to say it, though. Is better, no, better, 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 better. Anyway, um, Vitua. Vitua, basically what it is, um, it is for VS Code, obviously. And it just uh, you know helps you with syntax highlighting. It's got uh, some snippets. Um, it does the snippets. Snippets. Are those like me. chicklets? Snippets. Um, yeah, no, it's not. It's just called. I screwed up what oh. I was saying. Um, it does do. It helps you with linting, error checking, and you know formatting of your your view component files and stuff. So um, that is the reason why we made Vitur Vitur or tip. Viewer. Yeah. Why are you always cramming VS Code down my throat, man? You're always talking about it. I love VS Code, man. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. You know, we do have this whole VS Code section, which is really, um, Ooh. I mean, you know technically so, has nothing to do with Cold Fusion. However, you know what? The Adobe has hinted at like an official, like, yep. Cold Fusion 
extension for VS Code. Now, I always had CF Builder and kind of ignored all the other IDEs, uh, but Adobe's hinted at, at that. And Rexsheath came onto CFML Slack uh, this last week in the Adobe channel and was asking how to contact, um, I believe, uh, Matthew Brown, the uh, the author of the main CFML extension for VS Code. Oh, cool. And I was like, hmm, interesting. So, it's getting good. Um, he, if he's going to help them, he should make them pay him a bunch of money. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm really hoping they're reaching out so Adobe can help uh, you know, sponsor the uh, the the CFML support that's already in in VS Code and make it better. Because I know there's a lot of people on VS Code, and I would love to see Adobe kind of uh, pitch in there and help the existing community that are already in there. So that'll just make all this VS Code stuff even more uh, more, more snazzy. sweet, more yeah. snazzy. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Um, I seriously doubt Adobe's listening, but Adobe, if you're listening, <laughs> give it a shot, don't, man. Don't get, don't get ahead of yourself there, man. Hey, man, I'm, you never know. <laughs> you never can tell. You never can tell. They, they could be listening and be like, you know what? These guys are right. We need to jump in on VS Code like they said last time and do it this time. And Yeah, that'd be cool. So, um, All right, guys, that does pretty much wrap up this portion of the show. Um the only thing we have left is to thank, uh, thank our Patreon supporters. Brad, would you like to uh, do a roll call? Do it in one breath. <gasps> do it, Andrew do Davis, it. Gary Knight, Yan Yannick, Joseph Lamry, Laskma, something I can't say, Richard Herbert, John Ferrer, <gasps> Carl Von Sutton, Don Bellamy, Sammy Knowlton, David Bellinger, Yogas Mathers, Stephen Klotz, Dan Card, Jeremy Adams, Brian White, Didier, I can't say his last name, Scott Steinbeck, Jordan Card. <sighs> Thank you, guys. I don't, I don't even know if that's the full list, but yes, thank you, you so much. You make this show happen, and you make the modules happen. More importantly, you make the modules happen. Um, all the open source stuff. All the open source stuff. So we do thank yeah. you for that. And, um, I mean, I guess that's a wrap, right? I, so, are we so. going to have to draw straws to see who's going to be here next week? Uh, well, it's not going to be Gavin. He's going to have to arm wrestle us to get, get back on the show. Ooh. We, we, could, we, could have, we could have people vote, put out a poll. Do you want to see the kiwi, the redneck, or the redhead? No, because I don't want to get voted off the island. <laughs> I know I'll get voted off the island. Wait, 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 no, no, no. That. You and I can create a strategic alliance. Yeah, okay. I've, I've seen enough reality shows to know how this works now. We'll start sabotaging Gavin. I mean, no, <laughs> we'd never do that. So, Gavin. But Gavin, I hope you're enjoying yourself. Uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Start All right, guys. And we are off. Show notes for this episode can be found at cfmlnews.modernizeordie.io, where you can also subscribe to your favorite podcast player like Spotify or iTunes. We also have the link to YouTube to find more videos just like this. The music used in this podcast is under a royalty-free license from Sound.com and Bluetree Audio.